Howdy everybody, welcome back to Combo Compendium. Today we're talking about a new favorite deck of mine that I've been playing a ton recently. And uh, people have been asking me to make a guide for it at my locals. Um, and the deck's also been getting a lot of popularity in the rogue competitive scene lately. Especially on like Dueling Book and stuff. Even at regionals. Uh, and it's Scareclaw. So Scareclaw is an archetype where they have a boss monster called Scareclaw Triheart. And this card is kind of like an anti-meta boss monster for current popular decks. All face-up monsters on the field are changed to defense, and it's unaffected by the activated effects of defense position monsters. So, when you think about the current format, Right, the most, some of the most represented decks are going to be Kashtira. There's a lot of branded at my locals. Um, brand, branded is a very popular locals and regional level deck, um, and there's a bunch of other just random rogue decks floating around that just don't have an out to this card. Like straight up, just don't have an out. I think this deck cements itself into a very specific niche as like a pseudo anti-meta deck. The deck has a lot of one card and two card combos that can get you to that try heart. So let's just start off with something simple like uh, just one of the level three guys. There are, there are three different of the level threes that you can start with. Uh, there's Acro, Astra, and Baloney. And they all have different little effects they all give your tryhard different effects, but mostly what you need to know is that they are all one card combos off the normal summon. So for example, if we just normal summon Astra here, it lets us go into Scareclaw Lightheart, which is the archetype's link one that you can make with a Scareclaw monster or a Visa Starfrost. And when it's link summoned, it will add the primitive planet to hand which is very similar to a lot of other of the Visus lore field spells, where it will search on activation. So what we're going to grab is the Reichhardt. Now all of the Scare Claws have an effect where you can special summon them to an adjacent zone to a Scare Claw monster. So for example, uh, the zones aren't showing up very well with this field spell, but so the zone right below the light heart is an adjacent zone, and this also counts for zones going sideways as well. So it's up and down and sideways is what counts as adjacent. So we'll be able to special summon out this right heart but right below the light heart. So zone placement is a it's kind of important for the deck. You don't want to like clog up zones. Um, or else you won't be able to summon your scare claws. You kind of have to s position them in a way where you can always leave things open. So Reichart is going to grab scare claw arrival, which is basically monster reborn for scare claws. But it also has a protection effect in the graveyard to protect your scare claw link monsters from being destroyed. That gives your tryheart some additional protection once we get it out on the field. So we're just going to revive the, the acro, the monster that we started with, and all of these will go into the tryheart. Right, tryheart also has an additional effect that once per turn you can target a level 3 scareclaw in your grave, special summon it, and add a scareclaw from your deck to your hand, but you are locked into scareclaws for the rest of the turn. So if you're playing any sub engines in this deck, uh, this is the effect that you want to use probably last in your turn that you don't lock yourself into scare claws, but for the sake of just a one card combo, uh, we don't really care about that. So we're going to special summon back the acro, and we're going to add Astra. Now you can add another Reichhardt here if you want additional follow up next turn, uh, if you want to search like another arrival or something. Uh, but scare claw tryheart is not a hard once per turn. So what we can actually do is special summon out this Astra, 
and then link these three off into another tryhard, which we can then use the effect to get the acro back and search the right card. So why, what is the purpose of doing this? Tryhard can only summon level threes from the grave, which means if you end on just acro and then search Reichhardt, you won't have a level three in grave um, on the following turn. And since there are three of these level threes, it also helps you basically all of them into rotation in one go, right? Because if you start with one of them, on the first turn, you search the second one, and then on your follow-up turn, you know, if your board survives, so what you can do is bring back the Astra, search the Baloney, and now you have all three of the level threes in rotation, which sets up a very easy OTK. So that's, that's kind of the reason why you would want to start cycling like this. It also helps thin your deck um, so that you don't just draw basically vanilla monsters on your follow-up turn. So there's a couple reasons why you, you can do this. Um, if you have if you have follow-up in your hand already, you know, you can play a bit more safe and not go for the double try heart. Uh, but it is something to keep in mind if you're kind of low on resources and you just want to start cycling through all of your names. So that is essentially the one card combo that combos all the way up into try heart. So next we're going to move on to the two card combo, which is, we're just going to assume is going to be two of these level threes. Now it's going to be very similar in that we're going to normal summon one of them. We can go into a light heart here. Uh, now before we go for the light heart, you can special summon out this Astra as well. And what this will do is it will give you a little bit of protection against, um, if you're going second, any kind of like destruction, removal, or book of moons, if they don't book your normal summon. Uh, and if you're going first, uh, Gamma, Cyframe Gear Gamma is a decently popular card. So having both of these out on the field before you make the light heart, um, it can help you make a second one if, the, if this one gets interrupted. Right, so we're going to grab the field spell here. The field spell, we're going to grab Reichhardt once again because it searches our utility cards. And then we can go ahead and special out the Astra and then the Reichhardt. And Reichhardt will grab the Sclash. Now Sclash is a very important card for this deck for multiple reasons. So what it does, its first effect is kind of relevant, but it's mainly the second effect that you really care about. And it's that when your opponent activates a card or effect while you control a Scareclaw in the EMZ, you can send this face up card to the graveyard to negate that effect. This card being a trap card, and it requiring that it needs to be face up in order to activate the effect. So what you always need to make sure that you do if you get Sclash is to flip it in the draw phase or the standby phase uh, with no effect. You just want to flip it so that it's already face up when your opponent starts activating cards, right? Because if they activate, um, you know, like maybe a, a Dark Ruler or a Raigeki or Lightning Storm or whatever, if you don't have the Sclash already face up, you won't be able to negate that board wipe. So you need to make sure that you flip this up in draw phase or standby phase before your opponent starts playing cards so that you can play around board breakers. And of course we have the right cart for follow up next turn and we have another name engrave already for try heart so there isn't really a need to go for the double try heart play. You can if you want to but uh, for a setup like this it, it can be a bit overkill. <laughs> And honestly be a bit overkill. So we've gone through the one card, the two card, and now it's time for the three card combo. Um, and for a deck like Scareclaw, saying three card combo isn't really 
that hard to actually pull off, right? Pretty much all you need are just generic Scareclaw names, right? All of the monsters just need to say Scareclaw in the name, um, and you can usually pull this off. So it's basically any three Scareclaw monsters. Um, you can also do this with Visus, which I might be showing off here. You can play like 15 cards in your deck that if you draw any three of those 15 cards, you can do this. So it's, it's really not out of the realm of possibility. It happens quite often if you're playing um, Adventure or Pure. So we're going to start it off pretty much the same way as everything else. Go for the Lightheart plays. Grab the Visus. Now we're going to use the Visus to pop the Lightheart. Because it is not a Light and it is not a Warrior. So what we can do is destroy it to summon out the Visus Starfrost. And Lightheart has an effect in Graveyard that if we control a Visus Starfrost we can special summon it back. And then immediately link it off into another Light Heart. Because much like Tri Heart, this card is also not a hard once per turn. So we can go ahead and grab another field spell to, to use next turn. Uh, because the field spell is a hard once per turn, so we're just grabbing this for follow up basically. The so next we can go ahead and summon out our Astra first, and then our Reich Heart. Because Reichhardt, um, after you search, if there are three or more defense position monsters on the field, you can draw a card. Right, so if we have three defense monsters, we can grab something like an Arrival. Um, if you have additional extenders, you can get things like uh, Splash instead. But for this combo, you need to get Arrival because we're going to be making something pretty interesting here. And by interesting, I mean we're just making Baron. <laughs> um, because Visus is a level 6 tuner, and Reichardt's a level 4 non-tuner. So we can just go straight into Baron. Now, unfortunately, before we make Baron, we are already under threat of Nibiru. Um, this deck does have ways to make Baron before the 5th summon. Um, it does have a couple ways that you can do that. But sometimes you have to play a little bit awkwardly. Uh, <laughs> and it can kind of take away from your end board sometimes. So that'll just be ha that'll just have to be something that you, you practice with, you play with. And eventually you'll get the feeling for, okay, what can I do? What can't I do? If I make Barone before the fifth summon, am I still able to make a Triheart? Right? Do I still have enough material to be able to link climb into a tryheart? Right? Because you sacrifice a lot of your a lot of your monsters just to make this. Uh, but for this three card combo, we do have enough to be able to do that because we can use arrival to bring back anything from our graveyard and use our three monsters to make tryheart. And then tryheart of course will be able to summon back whatever we want, and grab the Reich Heart for follow-up. So this will be the combo that you'll be going for most of the time when you see a bunch of Scareclaw names in your opening hand. If you have a lot, if you have more than three, you can also go for the Splash, so that you'll have the Baron Omni Negate, the Splash Omni Negate, and the Tri Heart. But for a combo like this, we need the Arrival for follow-up. But it will also protect our Triheart from destruction. This combo right here is just going to be the, the one-card Turbo Barone play that you've probably seen like all over the place. People, including me, have made tons of videos about this already. But if you haven't seen it, uh, it's basically just using all of the using the Reichhardt as a one-card Scareclaw engine, the same way that you would use Elemental Hero Prisma. Because it just recycles all of these monsters, and it makes Barone uh, exactly on the fifth summon. So you make a Barone just at the cost of one card and a normal summon. 
So if you're playing something like... If you're playing some other deck with a mini Scareclaw engine in it, um, you can turbo out Barone before you even commit to your other engine. So next we're going to pivot a little bit into talking about some of the applications of Kashtira cards. Now, you can play either a small engine in something like a pure Scareclaw build. Uh, for example, I play I play three Fenrir and two Scareclaw Cash in my pure build. Um, but if you're if you're playing Kashtira Scareclaw, you're going to be playing a lot bigger of a Kashtira package. Uh, but first, I'm just going to be showing off the very simple combos that you can do with basically only Fenrir and Scareclaw. So if you want to play a very minimal engine, um, these are some combos that you will be able to go for. So we're going to start with the Fenrir. Fenrir is going to go ahead and grab the Scareclaw Kashtira, which is an insane card because it, it is just both archetypes at the same time. <laughs> and in a deck like Scareclaw, where you only need just a generic Scareclaw monster to start your entire combo, being able to search this off Fenrir is pretty insane. We're going to go ahead and normal summon out the Acro. Uh, you have to summon the Fenrir first, by the way. If you're not familiar with Kashtiras, uh, you can only special summon them if you control no monsters. So summoning out this Fenrir is the first thing that you should do before you commit to your normal summon and go into the Lightheart. So off the Reich Phobia, we're actually going to add another level 3 instead of the Reichheart, for reasons that I will show you later. What we're going to do is we are going to use the Scareclaw Kashtira, which can quick effect summon itself from the hand by banishing a Kashtira or a Scareclaw card from your hand or graveyard. So we're going to get rid of this Acro, but we searched a level 3, which means once we go into Triheart, we still have a valid target in the graveyard to be able to use the Triheart effect. And off the Triheart, we are going to grab the Reichheart. So we're kind of, <laughs> instead of starting with the Reichheart, we are finishing the combo with it. And the reason we're doing this is because once we summon it, we now have three defense position monsters on the field. Which means after we search for our Omni Negate, we now get to also just draw an additional card. Which, you know, could, could literally be anything. Uh, then we're going to go for the Triheart because we do have enough material. And what we can do is summon back the Astra and then grab a Reichheart for next turn. So, you know, we're grabbing the follow-up. Always got to make sure you have the follow-up. Which is something that this deck is very good at because it can search multiple field spells in one turn. It can end the turn by searching a starter. And we also have the Fenrir, who's also kind of a disruption, uh, because if our opponent activates a monster effect on a new chain after that effect resolves, we can target a face-up card our opponent controls and banish it face down. So we have the Triheart and Omni Negate and kind of basically some spot removal as well. So first I showed you what you can do with Fenrir plus any of your little guys, uh, but what if you draw it alongside Reichheart, which is... I guess you could call it the superior starter, but it's not always the best starter. We're going to special the Fenrir, grab the Kashtira, normal the Reichheart, grab the Arrival, and make the Lightheart here, which will of course add the field spell. Uh, and we are going to use the field spell to go ahead and grab the Visa Starfrost here. And we are going to go for the play with the Lightheart, where we can bring it back. Make another Lightheart, grab the field spell for follow-up. And then arrival back the uh, Reichheart here. We can make the Barone with our two guys. And then we can summon out the Scareclaw Kashtira by banishing the Lightheart. And then we can use all three of these guys to go into the Triheart. Now, unfortunately, since we started with Reich and didn't search for a level 3, uh, we can't use Triheart's effect here, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, 
if you think that you probably don't need the barone you can basically just go for the same combo that i showed uh like previously um just instead of searching right cart at the end of the combo you just start with it and then search a level three instead of the visa star frost so you know if if having that follow-up if you feel like having that follow-up is going to be really important in whatever matchup you're in then you can do that uh, but if you think that the baron omni negate is just going to save your ass from board breakers uh, then you should probably do that as well right and then of course we do play visa starfrost in this deck uh, and sometimes you will just hard draw it instead of uh, being able to search it. So one card or one combo that I like is the Fenrir plus Visus because it uh, does something very similar to the previous combo. So Starfrost can actually pop uh, your Cash Tiras because they are different type and attribute, uh, which means that we can just go for the Fenrir and then pop it and then summon out the Cash Tira by banishing that Fenrir. Um, because Kashtira has to banish from hand or grave, so being able to destroy it with Visus to put it in the graveyard is some it's pretty good synergy. Pretty good synergy there. And then since Scareclaw Kashtira is a Scareclaw that is searchable by a Kashtira monster, uh, we can just go for the full Scareclaw combo off of it, which is crazy. We're going to grab the right cart. We're just going to do all of the very simple stuff here. Oh, this is actually, yeah. So this is actually a alternate end board that I sometimes do when I'm playing um, specifically the Kashtira Scareclaw version where I'm playing a very heavy Kashtira engine. Because sometimes... Uh, you can end on a board that looks something like Lightheart, Blur, Splash, uh, and an Arise Heart as well. So you get two Omni Negates to protect your Arise Heart. Uh, because something like Splash, you don't necessarily have to have Tri Heart. You just have to have a Scareclaw in the extra monster zone, which just having this little Link 1 guy... Uh, turns on the Splash Omni Negate. So it's like, it's a super simple setup that you can go for if you have some kind of alternate engine that you want to protect, uh, like a full Kashtira package. Um, or if you're playing Adventure, then having Griffin, Splash, and Fleur is just three Omni Negates. <laughs> uh, so, you know, if you want to go for maximum Negates, you know, just play play the Yugi Boomer's worst nightmares, just, you know, Omni Negates everywhere. You know, you can do that. I actually forgot that I had this replay, so I'm going to show you what you can do with just a guy plus Visus. This will go in the the pure section that I um, have already left in terms of video chronological pro progression, but, you know, we're just going to go back in time a little bit here and show off uh, one of these. Alright, so this lets us go for the double uh, Lightheart play, get the field spell for follow-up. And then from here you can either choose to go for a Triheart Splash or Baron plus Lightheart Splash. So it just depends on whatever you want to do. Um, so it looks like here I'm just going for the Triheart because we do have a level 3 engrave, which... You know, having the level 3 engrave to be able to search, just regenerate a whole bunch of advantage, is usually a pretty good reason to go for Triheart over Barone in a scenario like this. Because Triheart on its own is already a pain in the ass for a lot of decks to deal with, so if they somehow out the Triheart, um, you're probably still going to be getting another turn, which means having all this follow up. Uh, is very nice. So next I'm just going to be showing off the very simple adventure combo. 
If you're familiar with Adventure, this is going to be probably pretty obvious, but um, if you're not familiar with how Adventure works, uh, this will be for the section for you. What we're going to do is we're going to activate Rite of Aramisir, which if you control no Adventure token, it will special summon out an Adventure token. And then we can put a Fateful Adventure from our deck face up, but we cannot activate the effects of monsters that were normal summoned. So this works extremely well in a deck like Scareclaw, where all of our starters don't have an effect anyway, right? Like, Acro doesn't actually have an activatable effect. Both of its effects are just uh, passive effects. So it works extremely well with Adventure. Um, so we're going to normal summon out the Acro. Fateful Adventure is going to add the Draco back to hand. And then we can use the Fateful Adventure to grab the Griffin Rider by discarding this Draco back. Draco back will then equip to a normal monster we control, which is the token, and we can summon out the Griffin. So what the Griffin does is that it is an Omni Negate while we control an Adventure token. So as soon as we summon out this Griffin Rider, we now have protection for when we go for our entire Scareclaw one card combo, right? <laughs> that's, that's the main appeal of being able to play Adventure in a deck like this is that you can kind of just rely heavily on your tryhard while being protected by adventure stuff. And adventure stuff also counts as removal with Draco back, being able to bounce cards going second. Uh, Griffin Rider being able to protect you from like on field disruptions as well as hand traps. So the adventure engine can help you go second uh, while also providing hand trap protection going first because adventure sometimes will just bait out hand traps on its own right because if you activate fateful to search for griffin they pretty much have to ash this or that that ash in hand is just dead until they get rid of the griffin so it's just really nice for being able to protect your scareclaw plays uh, from disruption now the final variant that I want to talk about is going to be the Kashtira Scareclaw combos. Because um, I've been playing this deck, and I played it at my locals last night, and I, I was crushing it, bro. I went undefeated, like 2 0 everybody, pretty much. <laughs> it was insane. Um, this deck's power level is, on a, is super underrated, in my opinion. Uh, so the main... The main difference between this and just playing Fenrir in like a pure build uh, is that you is is just unicorn. <laughs> it's just unicorn. Um, unicorn being the one card combo starter for Kashtira. So basically, you can play a one card Kashtira starter that doesn't use the normal summon, and then you can play a one card Scareclaw starter that also that does use the normal summon. So they're, they're two archetypes that work together, but they don't conflict with each other at all, for the most part. As long as you order your effects correctly, they don't actually interfere with each other. So, let me give you an example here of just Unicorn plus a guy. Unicorn's gonna go ahead and special and grab the Theosis. Now Theosis, if we use it, we are locked into Xyz for the rest of the turn. So we're basically just going to be holding this for a while. Because what we want to do first is search, or search, go for the Scareclaw line. We're going to go for the Reichhardt, right? This is the same one card combo that I showed you at the start of the video. Right, so we get to make the Triheart here. Now, once again, if we use Triheart Effect here, we are now locked into Scare Claws. So, what we're going to do is go back over to our Kashtiras, right? So we're, we're bouncing back and forth between them, trying not to restrict ourselves. We're going to summon out the Fenrir because it is a different attribute than the Unicorn. And Fenrir is going to go ahead and grab us our Riseheart. Now we're already under Nib, 
So, we might as well just full commit, right? We might, we might as well just full commit here. So we're going to go ahead and summon out the Rise Heart. We're going to make the Shangri Era, and then use the Arise Heart effect to banish... You can banish pretty much whatever you want. Um, if you have something like a... Scareclaw Kashtira in hand, you can banish Birth, and then use Scareclaw to banish Theosis, and then Theosis, once it's banished, will add the Birth back to hand. Uh, but the same can be said for any Kashtira card, right? So you could also just add the Unicorn back to hand by banishing Theosis. Right, so you can do anything like that however you want. Uh, and then next we are going to go for the Arise Heart because Arise Heart has an alternate summoning condition that once we activated the Shangri Era to lock a zone, because Rise Heart banishes cards from our opponent's deck face down once we use its effect. Uh, we can now just overlay the Rise Heart into the Arise Heart. I mean, lore, am I right? So if you're not familiar with Arise Heart, it is that it's a macro cosmos, so any card sent to graveyard is banished. Once per chain, which this is a mandatory effect, Every time a card is banished, you attach a banished card to this card as material. And once per turn, quick effect, you can detach three materials to target a card on the field and banish it face down. So, while it, going for this line, it doesn't have three materials on its own. Um, just by, you know, activating effects or your opponent, you know, activating spell cards like search spells, things like that. Um, this card's just going to naturally build up a ton of material over the course of a game. So, so I wouldn't worry about not having three materials because it, it will soon. Alright, so now, now that we've finished our Kashtira line, we are now locked into Xyz monsters. Um, but we're not locked out of Scareclaws. So, we're going to go back over to our Scareclaw and use the effect of Try Heart to get the Acro and search for follow-up for next turn. So we're going to go ahead and grab that right card. Uh, you can... This also has something to do with what I said earlier about the Theosis, where you can actually add the Scareclaw Kashtira and then banish the Theosis to summon it and then grab whatever you banished off of Rise Heart. So it's like a way to search for any Kashtira card in your deck for follow-up instead of Reich Heart for follow-up. So if you feel that, you know, maybe having a Birth as your follow-up play is better than having Reich Heart as your follow-up play, you can do that. Which is just one of... which just goes to show the ways that this archetype blends to these two. Well, these two archetypes blend together so well. Um, is that you know your your Kashtiras can search for your Scareclaw engine. Your Scareclaw engine can also search for your Kashtira engine. Uh, it's it's really cool. So this is kind of the very simple setup where basically we just took both one card combos and just smashed them together. Uh, but still, this is a pretty formidable board. Um, I also didn't even show this, but during the standby phase, during your opponent's standby phase after you pass turn, uh, you can just use Shangri-Era to summon a Fenrir from deck. Uh, so that Fenrir will be an additional interruption. Or you can summon a Unicorn, which Unicorn will get to rip a card out of your opponent's extra deck face down whenever they activate a monster effect. So, whichever one of these you think will be will be better, you can go for. Now, this will be almost the same as the last one in terms of the starting hand, uh, but we're just going to add, we're just going to say, what if we have a Reichhardt as well? Uh, because Reichhardt is, our Reichhardt can be the heart and soul of the Scareclaw combo, um, but having two monsters, um, if you've been taking notes, Having two Scareclaws will get you Triheart and Sclash, which is the Omni. And having an Omni to protect your Kashtira engine from things like Book of Eclipse uh, is pretty good. 
So we're going to start the same way, grab the Theosis once again, and then we can go for our whole scare claw line. Now what you can do here is go for that double Omni combo that I showed you earlier, right? Because having the Keshtira engine live sometimes is just going to be better than Triheart in certain matchups, right? If you're playing against a Link-based deck, maybe something like Live Twin or Tri Brigade, um, those decks deal with Triheart very easily. So having having an alternate engine to fall back on uh, instead of Scareclaw can be very nice. And having two Omni Negates to protect your Triheart is also very nice. We're going to go for the Light Heart, which will also grab our Field Spell for follow-up. And Reichheart does get the additional draw here since we have three defense monsters. Um, so one thing to keep in mind is just always, if you're going first, it's probably best just to summon everything in defense so that your right cart, you don't accidentally miss the draw on the right cart. Right, because look how much advantage that we've already generated just over the course of this combo. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to make the Baron here. So now the rest of our line is already protected. And then we can go for the Theosis on the Unicorn to summon the Fenrir, which will of course grab the Rise Heart. And then we'll be doing all the same stuff here. Make the Shangri-Era, Rise Heart will banish whatever we want. Shangri-Era will trigger to lock one of our opponent's zones. And then since we used Shangri-Era effect, we can indeed make the Rise Heart. Now we get to set our Splash and Pass. And during standby phase, we can activate both the Splash and the or the Splash and the Shangri Era to get a Fenrir. And now we have the two Omni Negates plus Fenrir plus a Rise Heart, whatever other cards we also just happened to have in our hand um, at the start of our combo, right? So this this gives your a Rise Heart a ridiculous amount of protection with the Fleur and the Splash. So pretty much the only thing that they could have would be something like uh, Kaijus and Lava Golems. They pretty much have to have <laughs> Kaijus, right? <laughs> or three Board Breakers. They have to have three Board Breakers or a Kaiju. And some people just aren't playing the Kaijus. Some people really believe that, you know, Board Breakers are enough. Uh, so if your opponent isn't playing kaijus, they're going to have a really rough time against a setup like this. And then here's one final little showcase of the um, Kashtira side of the deck, where we can actually use uh, the Scareclaw Kashtira as a way to pivot between our engines, right? Because it is indeed both archetypes. So with the Unicorn here, instead of grabbing the Theosis, we're going to grab the Birth, right? Because um, while you could make just a Rise Heart Pass, which plays around Nibiru, um, you know, you're not really playing your Scare Claws. And this is a Scare Claw video, so I'm going to play fucking Scare Claws. What this will do is Birth will let us normal summon level 7s without tributing. We're going to go ahead and uh, summon, out, summon out our Scare Claw guy. Just normal summon that. And then bam, that's your... <laughs> That's your full scare clock combo right there. Now birth also has another effect where you can summon your banished or in your graveyard cash tiras. So after we link this off, we can summon it back. And once we summon the right cart now, we will now have three defense monsters. Be able to draw an extra card once we get our search. Um <laughs> I threw this in as a joke because it does happen sometimes where you'll use right cart's effect to draw and then you'll draw prosperity which like the the chances of that happening are very low but it, it does happen and it's just so unfortunate because in a deck like this where you're playing two different engines a card like prosperity is probably mandatory uh so drawing it off of right cart is uh just 
the worst feeling in the entire world. Uh, so we can go ahead and use our arrival here after making the tryhard. Uh, and since we're already committed under Nib, uh, you can choose to just sit on these two. Uh, or you can make the Shangri-Era so that on our, on our opponent's turn we can go ahead and summon the Fenrir, which will give us an additional disruption as well. So this is just a, a neat little showcase of how you can, you know, pivot between both decks because, you know, a card like Scareclaw Kashtira um, works with both engines at the same time, which is very cool. And then finally, to wrap things up, I'm just going to show off, you know, a funny, uh, some some neat little interactions that this deck has with some different extra deck stuff. So, all of the Scare Claws except Reichhardt, they're all level 3. Um, and of course, Tryheart, to use its effect, requires that you have a level 3 engrave. So, there is a card that you can make... Um, Depending, which is called Cherubini Ebon Angel of the Burning Abyss. And this card's effect is that it can send a level 3 monster from the deck to the graveyard as cost, which is stupid. Uh, and then this card gains attack and defense equal to that, whatever, you don't care about that. You just care about the Foolish Burial. So, uh, you can use it to send something like Water Enchantress. So if your hand is just full of Scare Claws, and you don't have access to your adventure engine, uh, you can just go for Cherubini, dump the Water Enchantress, and then uh, and then you're just off to the races, right? You can banish it from the graveyard, grab your right, and then from here on, we're just playing you know, good old standard adventure Scareclaw stuff, right? We don't get access to the field spell by doing this, just because of Lightheart's restrictions of it. It has to be summoned to the EMZ to get the field spell search. Uh, so if our extra extra monster zone is being held up by the Cherubini, then you know you can't really make the Lightheart. But it's not a big deal because we can we can still use Tryheart at the end of the day to bring back one of our level threes and Reichheart. You know, next turn should be some pretty good follow-up. So that's just a little neat interaction with Cherubini. Uh, another thing that you can also do with your Kashtiras. Yeah, so with your Kashtira engine, uh, you can use a Draco Sack with two level 7s. And what this will do is summon two level 3 tokens. And then... And then with those two level three tokens, you can then make the Cherubini to dump either a level three Scareclaw. So it's a way that you can get a level three Scareclaw in Graveyard if you only open Kashtira cards. Which of course will give you access to things like your Triheart uh, activation being live, things like that. Uh, but it's also a way to dump the Water Enchantress for your adventure package. So if you're playing <laughs> if you're playing Kashtira Scareclaw Adventure, which some people do, and it's like just a mishmash of three different decks combined into one, uh, Draco Sack does get you to your adventure engine and your Scareclaw engine. Which is kind of which is kind of ridiculous, but also very cool at the same time. <laughs> 